Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Integris Roundtable discussion. I'm Susan Goslin with the Integris Marketing Department, and I am here today with two of the most important leaders in our company. We have Rashad Bajwa, who is our CEO, and Will Welch, who is the CEO of Caltech. Now, you may be wondering, what do these two companies have to do with each other? Well, we have been in the news a little bit lately because Integris has joined forces with Caltech. Caltech is also an MSP, and their expertise is in working with community banks and credit unions. So we're here today to talk a little bit about what this joining of forces is going to mean for our company. So with that, I wanted to just kind of lay it out on the table, right? I mean, Will, Caltech is a highly successful MSP with a long, long history of working in the banking segment. Integris is a hugely fast-growing MSP that's really coming up in the world. What was it about Integris that made you want to do this deal? All right. Thank you, Miss Susan. I think that was your uh, really nice way of calling me old, that we've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have, and uh, we've been uh, we've been very fortunate to have a great team um, that we work with, and and so as we've uh, kind of gotten to know other companies, other MSPs throughout the country, going to different peer group meetings and things like that, um, we've just we've been looking for a team that had great leadership, a great vision that aligned with ours, and ultimately values that aligned with our culture. And uh, we finally found that. And so that's what attracted us initially um, to Rashad and Integris. And we hope uh, that it continues to prove fruitful for our team, which it seems to so far. Okay, so I've got to turn that around then for Rashad. So, you know, what was in it for us uh, as Integris and, and what are those, this, what is this expertise, this, this vertical expertise going to mean for the company? Sure. Um, and you're going to hear a lot of the same comments that Will mentioned because a big part of it is there was this mutual respect through the peer relationships that we had. Uh, Integris, as, as you know, is already the coming together of quite a few best in class, high performing MSPs. And so we have a lot of swagger. You know, when, when we come into these groups, we have a lot of swagger. I mean, not only are we growing fast, but we're uh, a premium provider, have a very strong reputation in the marketplace. And there's not a lot of folks uh, where we enter the room and we look across the table and, and we have a great deal of respect and curiosity first as to kind of um, how they're able to execute uh, and perform so highly as they have in the past. And so Caltech was as good as we've seen. And when and so that, you know, it starts with the, with the numbers, with the performance, with the reputation. But then when you have the conversations, you realize there's so much other uh, critical underpinnings to it. And, and that starts with the values. The fact that uh, the leadership team that we met spoke about their people the same way that we spoke about our people, wanted the same thing for their clients and their staff like us, focused on legacy, focused on community, uh, was incredibly powerful to us. And, and, and you know, and that's, and that's when it started, you know, the, 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 the process of wooing Will and his team and, and, and letting them know that, um, you know, there might be a good future together. Well, so, you know, we've talked about this from a, you know, kind of a high level macro, you know, how well do our corporations fit together philosophically speaking. But let's take a minute to talk about the product and how that plays out on a customer level. Will, I was wondering if you could just kind of give us a, an, a little overview of what is it that makes Caltech such a leader in the banking and credit union space? What differentiates you from other MSPs? Great. Well, thank you uh, for that one. Cause that's, that's where I, um, 
like to brag. So, uh, <laughs> you know, for the last 20 plus years, and then we've been doing this, Caltech's been in existence since 88. We merged with Caltech in 98. But for the past 22 years, at least since Y2K, we've been focused on growing our community banking and credit union practice. And the reason for that was because they were required to do it right. And our team enjoyed working in a regulated industry that had someone looking over their shoulder that made them do things the right way. Our, we didn't have to do things um, halfway or half-baked solutions. We were able to do it um, with a focus on security and ultimately a focus on compliance, but compliance does not equate to security. Um, you, you have to be truly focused on security to end up secure. Um, as we've seen in the news over the past couple of years, anybody is a target these days. And um, that is definitely true for financial institutions. So um, the, the reason why I believe this uh, move makes such great sense for Integris is that we're able to truly stand up a financial institution division that has expertise, has years of, of training and growing our team to truly focus on that. And so every product that we've created, whether it's from cybersecurity to our data center and hosting offerings, um, it has been specifically designed to, like I said, not only be compliant, but to keep our community financial institutions independent. And that's what we want to do. We want to make their jobs easier so that they can stay independent and keep serving the communities that they're in. Um, they're, they're critical to these small communities that they're located in and to the large ones, but, um, they're, they're just, it's imperative that our country have community banks and we believe in their mission. We believe in their, what they're here for, and we want to help them remain independent. Well, and to that point, I can I can speak for the marketing department in saying that we are really excited about the possibilities that come with having literally a 200 person, you know, deep force of people that totally understand this vertical. Their their compliance is a totally different ball of wax than, you know, just your standard company. I mean, not just any mom and pop MSP down the street can come to work for a community bank or a credit union. So um, being able to have that kind of credibility um, has been just invaluable to us. So so I'm wondering, and, and I'm actually asking this question to both of you now, I am wondering, you know, when you're telling your customers about this new joining of forces that we have going on here. What are you saying to them and, and how are they reacting to the news? How are they responding? So I'll, I'll take it from the point of legacy Integris customers. And uh, uh, Will can obviously share how Caltech customers have, have um, uh, latched onto the news, but Integris actually had quite a few community banks as our clients already. Um, you know, we're, we're obviously we're across many states and many of our regions had quite a few community banks. Interestingly enough, I'm in New Jersey. The New Jersey Banking Association has been our managed services client for over 20 years, Integris. Mm -hmm. um, and through that relationship, there was, there was community banks that came our way. That being said, um, when we were evaluating options around the industry, we saw in Caltech a deep level of experience, knowledge, reputation, not only in, on the technology piece of community banking, uh, but the relationships, the community part, like they understand the industry and how to serve that industry. And they've, um, even, even for example, a website they created, I don't know how long ago it was well, but, um, about just helping banking associations keep banks secure. So that sort of thought leadership in the space. Oh, we knew, even though we did community banking in the past, it was barely a sliver of the capabilities that they were able uh, to bring to the table. And so when the decision point was to, do we build it or do we bring them on? Oh my goodness, we bring them on. Uh, and, and now we can benefit uh, that everywhere. And we are approaching our Integris banking clients, telling them, yes, we, we, were, we were very good. We helped you with infrastructure. We held you with cybersecurity, but 
you know, there's other areas of community banking that we just weren't able to necessarily um, assist with compliance, uh, as well as uh, working with the regulators and, and some of these core processors. Well, guess what? We can do that now. Uh, we have these folks who are now on our team and now they get uh, the depth and breadth of services that we can offer is to the community banks is, is far greater than we could before. And so, Will, what are they saying to you when you're, you're just like, well, there's going to be a change to come and what's, what's uh, happening there? Yeah. So the, the interesting part is, is, is much like Integris, we have some clients who are not community banks, right? We, we were doing this for a while beforehand. And so those clients are wondering what's going to happen. And to them, I would say nothing is going to change either because Integris has a true focus on allowing the local resources that have been servicing you to continue servicing you. And so if there's a better solution that we have available as a result, and you want to evaluate that, we want to show it to you. We want to give you that option, but we don't want to break anything that's working right today. All of that said on the community banking side, our community banking clients are excited because they know that we're able to focus even more on community banking, um, with no distractions. We're able to truly be a, um, financial institution specialist even more than we've ever been before. Um, this past year, we had uh, the Texas Department of Banking come in and do a discovery exam. Uh, what that means, that's, that's nothing official. It means they're trying to understand what managed services providers do so that they can see how critical they are to the su survivability of community banks. Well, what that means for us is, is we are, are a part of helping them shape how their, what their regulations are gonna look like and what their exams are going to look like as they start looking into other managed services provider, which we think are awesome because many of them are not doing it well and are not focused on the things that we're focused on from little things like, you know, knowing what that every community financial institution has IT committee meetings and that we're in those and that, you know, knowing how to report to the board so that they can get the information they need to know, to be able to handle questions that come from their regulators when they come in, um, to working with many auditors. You know, we, we have, uh, over, well over a hundred community financial institu institutions that we work with and they, are, so we're being examined or audited two or three times a week is what that means. So the language is very commonplace to us. And so our, our customers are excited about it and uh, look forward to watching us get even better. And, and Susan, one, one additional point on that, and it gets me excited just hearing Will say this, because it, for us, reputation is everything. And we never wanted to promise any client, uh, in particular a regulated client, something that we could not deliver. And so over the years, we would always tell community banks, look, infrastructure, cybersecurity, um, uh, network services, a whole bunch of things that Integris is very good at all day long. We can help you with that. But then when they asked us to come in and, and talk to examiners and help them with their IT handbook and things along those lines, could we do it? Could we fake it? Yeah, I'm sure we could. Will's even said it before. It's like, you just got to know it. It's not, it's not necessarily some huge bridge to leap over, but you got to commit to it. The experience gets developed. You develop the playbook. And so now we have that. And so now we can go back to those community banks and say, look, we, we, in order to preserve our reputation and your reputation, we told you what we could not do before. And now we can go back to those same, same community banks and, and now in full confidence, know that we can deliver a best in class solution. Exactly. As Will said, not only the infrastructure, the cybersecurity, but the entire gambit of it needs, uh, going all the way to the regulatory and compliance stuff as well. Well, I mean, and that's really where all these synergies come to play, right? I mean, we've got, um, you know, on one hand, we've got this deep vertical expertise that that Caltech is bringing to us. And then on our side of things, in, at Integra's side of things, we have all these boots on the street. You know, we're in 11 states. We're able to have, you know, engineers on site in places that would have been very difficult for them to reach. We also have, you know, this national network of virtual chief information security officers, which we is such a differentiator, um, you know, for us as a company. 
So, you know, it's MSP, MSSP, and, you know, all of this high-level banking industry and credit union industry expertise. It's, it's really the per perfect marriage. So, you know, we've, we've got this great thing that's been put together, and I can, I can attest to you from uh, the marketing side of things. We are feverishly working on, you know, getting all of those pieces, you know, in, in the same box, right? And, and uh, I'm wondering, as you guys are looking down the road at what the possibilities are for us, um, what are you most excited about seeing coming down the road um, for these two joint companies now? The, the ability now to leverage the additional deep market expertise that Caltech, um, f the new, formerly known as Caltech, now the Financial Institutions Division. And Will, what is it affectionately referred to as? FIDI? Is it FIDI? <laughs> They're calling it FIDI. <laughs> They're calling it FIDI. Um, we now get to give it a national stage. And as someone who has seen literally thousands of MSPs in virtually every single state in the country, I can tell you there is no better product. There literally is no better product as operationally mature, as um, robust in its breadth and depth of offering. We get to get bring now this product to the national stage. And so I'm, I'm just super excited because I, I know even in New Jersey where Integris, yeah, we, we work with community banks and we were probably one of the best MSPs for community banks in New Jersey. And I truly knew there was still this huge gap that we were not able to deliver on. Now we can do that not only in New Jersey, but in every other state um, because of what, what uh, Will and his exceptional team bring, bring to the table. Well, I just add it's it's our team. Uh, you know, uh, Rashad acknowledged them; they're unbelievable. Um, he, he got to look, see a glimpse of that again today. We had a, a strategy meeting where we rolled out the the state of Fiddy uh, mm -hmm. today, and uh, our guys did a great job of introducing that and sharing how, what the plan is. And our team will execute because they are great, and we've been uh, blessed beyond measure to have a team like that. And, and R Rashad, you're right; you've got a great team on your hands there and they have developed some great products again with the desire to help community banks remain independent. You know, um, that actually ties into the next question that I wanted to ask you, Will. Um, let's talk a minute about community banks. You know, the, the banking industry is something that has seen a lot of consolidation, um, and, uh, you know, a lot of blowback and, you know, in a, in a number of ways. So I'm wondering, what was it that inspired you to go after this segment? And why are these banks and credit unions so important to their communities? What are they bringing to the table? Yeah, so they, they have the local relationships to truly know which families need the help which families are going to actually pay them back. Um, that's kind of an important part of their banking business. Um, and they, they've, they've built their lives there. Most of these community banks are either, um, family owned or at least family back. You know, many of the local, uh, people in the community are on the board of those banks. And so they, they have a deep, um, desire to improve the communities that they're in, to help with education, to help with, um, whatever kids um, events there are out there you, you you'll see in every community in the nation you'll see local community banks that are supporting all those schools and, and kids events and so the, there's a reason for that and then that's that's because that's what our country was built on um you can see over um, generations of families who have had great banking relationships and those get they, they, they're tough to handle whenever those, uh, when that consolidation happens. Um, we see many times it, if it's bought by a bank, that's a national player, um, they ultimately, uh, lose those relationships. And that, that's the challenge that we have ourselves. Uh, you know, Rashad and I have talked about it many times that that's the same challenge we'll have becoming a national community banking practice. Um, but we're going to do it intentionally. And our community banks, they are very intentional about the communities that they serve. 
they grow up on um, corridors or grow in local regions um, to further um, benefit those communities that they service. And so that's why I believe that they're critical to our, our entire country. It, and, yeah. it, and Susan, and community banks are very much like the story of Integris, meaning even the, the companies that came together to form Integris were MSPs in their local community. Mm-hmm. To, to, to the last one. And depending on which lens you look at it through, Integris now is the combination over many, many years of a lot of these local community MSPs that have now come together to, so that way, therefore we can leverage scale and uh, resources in order to keep up with new threats and reg regulatory uh, requirements and things along those lines. But it's very local focused. We have managing directors in every single market because we know we want to have gravitas in the local region. We don't want, if we lose that, you know, as Will said, we've had this discussion before. If we lose that local relationship touch, then we become, uh, you know, fill in the blank, a national utility where, where there's no more humanity. Everyone's just a number. The reason people go to community banks is because they know their banker and their banker knows them. The reason people use Integris is because they know who these IT folks are. It is their IT department. We are their IT department and these folks are in their community. They go to the same schools. They, they are involved in the same business associations. There are managing directors or on the local boards of nonprofits and community work. So it's really important. Um, the, what our contribution to protecting community banks is very much, um, in the same vein as the way that we see success for ourselves. Okay. And, you know, really that it's a mindset, isn't it? It's a mindset. It's, it's how you think about the role that we play in our clients business. You know, a lot of people, when they ask me where I work and what I do, I don't really want to say that, oh, I work at an IT company, because to me, we are working in a business enablement company. You know, it is our job to make our clients' business goals come true, to give them the platform and the technology and the tools to do this big thing that they need to do. Um, so that they're ready for whatever comes down the line, that they're ready and they're protected against whatever is coming at them. Um, so this is just one more part of it, right? I mean, so. And, no, so, and, Su and Susan, th that's what a bank does. Mm -hmm. That's you know, exactly it's right. It's business, business enablement. That, you know, their tool is capital. Our tool is technology. But our jobs are the same. And that is to allow the businesses in our local communities to thrive. And to not be at a disadvantage compared to national peers that that may um, may not know the people in their local market. Well, super. Well, that gentleman was all the questions that I had for you today. But I'm wondering if there is anything that we haven't discussed that you think is important to let the wider world know about this wonderful joining of forces that we've done. I can't think of anything, but, um, that, that hasn't already been covered, but Susan, thank you very much for, uh, those thoughtful questions and Rashad, um, you always give me confidence that we've got our team in good hands. Great job. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, well, stay tuned and we have lots of other podcasts and videos and things. Check out our YouTube channel, check out our help desk podcast. And check out our cybersecurity podcasts that we do as well on all the major platforms. And with that, good day. <laughs>